Hi, everybody. Welcome to Radio Control Hobbies. I'm Chris Chianelli, and I'm here on location in Winter Springs, Florida, at Bob Violet Models, definitely and without a doubt the premier manufacturer of true turbine-powered radio-controlled jets. Now, we've featured a few of these awesome machines on past episodes, and judging by the letters, you guys want to know more. And that's what we're going to give you. The name of today's episode is Jets, Up Close and Personal. We're going to show you the mechanical features, how they're manufactured, and we're going to explain exactly how a true turbine works. And then we're going to put these awesome machines through their paces. I'm here with Bob Violet, founder and president of BVM Models. Thanks for joining us, Bob. My pleasure to be here, Chris. Now, Bob's love affair with aviation started when? Yeah, a long time ago. Very early, built model airplanes, uh, you know, the earliest years. How old? Yeah, six years old. So uh, from that, you know, back then we were flying control line, free flight kind of things we all did. And it uh, came time to have to make a living, so I joined the Navy and uh, got through uh, flight school and uh, had a career in the Navy for six years, followed by an Eastern Airlines career for about 18 years. And then you transitioned to making your living building these awesome models. Well, this is a gorgeous F-100. Tell us a little about it. Yeah, this is built from one of our kits. The uh, builder of this model, Joe Grice, lives out in Minnesota, another airline fellow. Uh, this is the finest example that I've ever seen of a scale jet model airplane. And Joe is the best at what he does, and uh, the techniques that he develops applying this real aluminum adhesive back type yeah. of material, panel by panel, and then massaging it with sandpapers and polish and stains, thousands of rivets put in in a scale location. This is an ultimate, ultimate machine. What impresses me is just like on the full scale, every panel you see is, is each is a little different. Some are a little shinier, some are a little more matte finished. And uh, it's, 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 it's extremely true to scale. Yeah, that comes from the builder, like Joe, studying photographs yeah. of the real airplanes. He actually got to meet the pilot who flew this airplane in Vietnam. This is not just an F-100. Mm -hmm. This is a specific F-100. Mm -hmm. And he models that particular That's airplane. Right. That's right. And this, this jet won uh, team scale at uh, last year's Top Gun with David Shulman flying it. Uh, it's a, it's a maximum machine. It even has an operating drogue chute. When yeah. it lands, it pops out. It's got a tail hook. It's got an operating canopy. Uh, the wing slats, of course, operate. And it's a 200 plus mile per hour machine. Ah, speed. OK, this is the epitome of scale. I want to show you the epitome of speed right behind me here. Look at this gorgeous airplane. How, well, before we get into that, what is it? We call it a super bandit. It is a non-scale airplane. It's my conception of what a great model airplane would be to go fast and do very, very precise maneuvers. So, so the, the whole design point of this airplane is speed? It's flying, and speed is a nice byproduct of having a very clean, powerful machine. All right, speaking of power, when we come back, we're going to tell you all about what used to power these awesome jets and these true turbines, which power them today. Don't go away. What the Welcome back to Radio Control Hobbies. While this show does focus on true turbines, there wasn't always the option of a turbine. In the beginning, we had what, Bob? We had what we call the ducted fan. And uh, this is a unit that my company developed. And it has a multi-bladed carbon fiber fan with some stator blades and a shroud, and all that's driven by a conventional single-cylinder piston engine. Uh, this extension out the back here is the tuned exhaust and quieting uh, feature for getting rid of the exhaust and some of the noise. But it was also required to get the high RPMs needed. Oh, yeah, sure. This added about 1,500 RPMs uh, to a total of about 24,000 RPM. Um, which, you know, when we started this, most model airplane engines couldn't do that, so we developed this along with Henry Nelson uh, specifically to do the job. He designs racing engines. 
But today, we do have the turbine option. And why don't you quickly explain just how a turbine works? This is uh, an example of one of the first turbines that was successful. This is called an AMT Olympus. And they're really very basically, uh, very basic machines. We have a centrifugal compressor, and most of these units are used on automobile superchargers. Right. Then behind this compressor is a diffuser section that takes the swirling flow, straightens it out, and slows it down but raises the pressure. But let me just interrupt. Basically what's inside here is just one big, I guess you call it rotor? Right, it's one shaft, two bearings. The bearings are called hybrid bearings. They have uh, uh, ceramic balls and steel races. But one shaft to which the compressor rotor is attached, and on the other end is the turbine rotor. Okay. So we have a centrifugal compressor, what's called, I think, a can annular, or one combustion chamber, and an axial flow uh, turbine wheel. Is that where the compression would take place? The compression takes place up front here. Uh, the, the air is actually brought in and swung outwardly and compressed by centrifugal action. Okay. And then it straightens with the diffuser section. Okay. And the pressure rises as the speed slows down. And that's and, when it's ignited. And the fuel is injected through a, an orifice through this thing here. And it's ignited by a simple glow plug. Right, we, right. we get the engine started with a little propane ingestion. And then the kerosene is automatically controlled into the engine by the computer. So it's very, basically, a, a very simple machine. And just like the real ones, they last a long, long time. Yeah. There's the moving parts are not changing direction. They're just rotating on a couple of bearings. And this is still produced today? Yes, sir. And right this... here in West Virginia, USA. All right. And tell us about this one. This is a, a bit later development, smaller, but... Uh, quite powerful. Uh, this is called a Jet Cat. Uh, they have a number of sizes in it, about four different sizes. And one of the features of this engine is that it has a small electric motor on the front right. with a Bendix type of starting device here. And the computer tells this thing to, to start. It automatically engages the compressor wheel and starts spooling it up, injects a little bit of propane automatically turns the glow plug on automatically, and then turns the kerosene on automatically. Okay, what's the RPM on one of these babies? Uh, this particular one will top out at 125,000 RPM. This larger one down here is about 117,000 RPM. And what, what is it idle at? Idles about 35,000. So it idles at higher RPMs than this piston engine's top speed. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go fire it up. <laughs> Okay, I've got the transmitter set up here. Got the fuel valve open inside here. That's a safety device, just to be able to turn it off by hand if fuel we want shut to. Off. So I'm going to put the start lever in the start position. We now have the green, red, yellow lights. Our indicator over here is doing the same thing. Now I move the throttle up, and we'll hear the motor start to spool up. We're going to hear a little ignition, very soft ignition happening now with the propane. Yeah. Now we're getting fuel, kerosene, going into the engine. What a sound. Does that sound exactly like a real jet? That's because it's powered by the exact same power unit. All right, now when we come back, we're going to show you how these things are made, and then we're going to go out to the field, and we're going to show you what they're made of in the air. Don't go away. I was stage four and considered terminal. Become the DIY workshop lighting design. 
Welcome back to Radio Control Hobbies. All right, you've seen the awesome turbine power plants, and these power plants make these airplanes go fast, very fast. And when we're talking that type of speed, you need structural integrity in these airframes. And structural integrity starts with precision cut parts. That's right, Chris. This is a, a sample uh, sheet, that's why it's painted orange. It's normally it's just plywood of bobcat parts. Various ribs, you know, notice the ribs have lightning holes in them and the little notches where the pieces will key together to make the assembly easy. How many parts in, in, in a typical airframe? Uh, it varies a little bit, but uh, sometimes 100 parts. And these are laser cut, That's CNC right. laser That's cut. That's right. We do that on this machine right over here. Let's take a look. This is a, a CNC or computer numeric control Control. machine that directs the laser, CO2 type of laser, and it's cutting this eighth inch plywood. Uh, it's very intricate designs like we showed you on the sample. Now over here, we've got a CNC or computer numerical controlled uh, routing machine. That's right, this is a routing machine. It's turning a uh, carbide cutter bit, maybe 25, 30,000 RPM. And this particular part it's making now is a wing spar to the F-100. And you use this for carbon fiber parts? Carbon fiber parts and plywood parts. For and instance, it's very difficult to cut aircraft five ply, uh, uh, birch ply in a quarter inch thickness. So for parts like that, if we want a nice clean edge, we'll cut it on the router. All right, let's go take a look at the parts being put together. Dave Valdez here is our expert on the F-100 wing, as well as some others. And uh, he's putting the final, uh, pretty much the final application of glue into the wing now. But first of all, he, he had to lay up the skins in this female mold. So this is skin on the bottom. The skin, is, uh, it's a laminate of fiberglass cloth, balsa wood, and carbon fiber. Okay. That is then put under a vacuum bag and put in the oven. And all that's cured, usually sits overnight. And then the next day, they, they have to sand the wing and then start putting all of these carbon fiber structures in here, uh, along with the balsa and plywood structures. And we make all these parts on our CNC machines right. in the other shop. So there's a very special kind of glue he's putting in here. We call aeropoxy. It's a strong uh, thixotropic glue. In other words, if he puts a glue on top of the rib, it stays there right. until the second half of the mold comes down onto it. So the wing has uh, carbon fiber spars that are bolted together. Even the landing gear mount is already established or built into the wing here. These spars are what go into the fuselage and are retained by, uh, by the wing bolts to a primary former in the airplane. The F-100 has a leading edge slat that comes out for takeoff and landing. And the, uh, the slat tracks are built into the wing with a very accurate fixture that goes on here. And these very precision uh, slat rails, these are actually what the model glues the rail onto, are hand fitted. Even after the CNC machine, there's a little hand fitting involved. And uh, so it has to be really, really perfect and every wing just right. And, Dave's been with us how many years now? 14 years. 14 years. 14 years. You're not tired of doing this yet, are you? No. Oh. <laughs> Just begun. <laughs> okay. So what we've got, we've got a bottom skin with all these internal parts and then a top skin and you clamp it all together. That's right. And do you call this a jig or a mold? This is a mold and it has, uh, you know, the very accurate uh, pins that align the, line the top the pin, and yeah. the bottom half. And then when it comes out of the mold in one rigid piece. That's right. Here is a finished part out of the mold. It's absolutely beautiful with all the panel lines and various small panels in the wing. And then the leading edge slat, which is a separate piece, is what fits in here. So the modeler gets this. He has to cut out some panels and actually put the landing gear and the servos in to run the ailerons and flaps and the leading edge. A lot goes into it. This is a precisionly crafted wing. Razor sharp, almost trailing yeah. edge. Yeah. Mr. Heen is going to pop this mold apart, and we're going to see what the How long has it been in there? Would you make, uh, sometimes we'll leave them in for a day or two, just depending on how often we need them. We, we'll build them and leave them in the mold till we really need them. 
So this fuselage may be in the mold a day or two, Look at sometimes three. Look all the detail three. that's molded right now. Oh, all that went into the pattern first, of course. Yeah. And uh, we CNC machine the patterns, and then we do a lot of hand work to, say, put in the gun ports, the speed brake recesses, the landing gear doors, some vents, panel lines. We've even developed ways to laser mark for the panel lines to make that a little bit easier for us. So, Mr. Heen, how long have you been with us now? Uh, 16 years, sir. 16 years. Yeah. It's been a very good relationship. You do good work. Yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, what else? Well, over on this table, we have Mr. Lee, who's putting the framework in to uh, a canopy. I believe this is a Sabre Jet canopy. And uh, where we used to mold reverse, flan reverse mold the flanges in fiberglass, we found that by putting wood structure in, the part stayed more stable and it was easier for the modeler to work with. So these internal parts are all made on our laser machine over there. And then using this fixture, Mr. Lee lines them up and then applies the glue. And tomorrow you'll pop this part out of there and we'll have a, an F-86 canopy. And this, these, uh, that's a jig. Yeah, yeah, just this wood structure up here here. is just allowing him to properly align and space these internal parts. So he's got he's got three different he's got a hatch to a super bandit. This is an F eighty six top and this is a forward canopy for a super bandit. An impressive amount of craftsmanship goes into building these airplanes. But what's really impressive is what they can do in the air. Don't go away, you don't want to miss this. Seen in Bob's factory, incredible care and craftsmanship goes into assembling these models. Now you're going to see why, because we're going to fly each and every one. Let me show you once again what they are. F-100, manufactured by North American. First Air Force supersonic airplane. King Cat. Notice the externally mounted Jet Cat turbine. This gets everything on the outside and really simplifies things, making it an excellent choice for the first time turbine pilot. Another North American airplane, F-86. Over here, we have the super fast, super bandit. This thing is limited to, limited to 200 plus miles an hour. Where do you see this thing go? And over here, a navalized version of the F-86, an FJ Fury. The Navy used this airplane too, and this is pretty much what it looked like. Inside this jet, we have the FT-500 compact turbine. And I know this looks like a squirrel's nest here, but it's actually very well laid out, everything all tied off, and every component has a specific use, and it comes with a diagram making it very easy to install and mount all the components. All right. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to fly these babies. As you've seen on today's show, turbine-powered jets are the epitome, the top, the last outpost of RC flight. It takes a while to get here, but it is worth it. At least in my opinion, it is the most awesome. Tommy Dodgson, David Schulman, Bob Violet, the Violet team, thanks for making this show very special. I really appreciate it. Remember, for more information on turbine-powered jets, go to our website, diynetwork.com. I'm Chris Chianelli. Thanks for joining us here on Radio Control Hobbies. We'll see you next time.